Before I was a dumb adult, I was a dumb kid who used to always go outside and go on adventures. I would go into the woods armed only with my imagination and a stick as my sword as I would attack bushes that looked like monsters. But then I was introduced into video games and I no longer needed to use my imagination or go outside. Best thing that ever happened to me. Today we'll be taking a look at a game called Venture Forth, which was developed by Arclight Worlds, who apparently decided that making Venture First, Second, and Third was a waste of their time, and instead jumped straight to the fourth installment of their Venture series. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> to put it simply, Venture Forth is a sort of first-person dungeon exploration game where finding the treasure, or aka the heart, is the main goal, much like digging through the laundry in the closet to find a clean pair of underwear because you've been wearing the pair you've got on for three weeks now and they're starting to solidify like quick drying cement. Why are we looking for the heart? Well, the game doesn't really say, so I assume it's because we don't already have one of our own because we were never hugged as a child since people were too afraid to catch our ugly. So we start up the game and find that we are standing on top of a tall pillar. How did we get up here, you ask? Well, it's pretty simple. Don't ask questions. We jump down from the pillar and land safely in some water, where we swim around for a little bit before heading into the cave, where we fall down into a hole and then jump into an air vent that pushes us up and out of the hole so we can continue down the cave. At this point, the game has already shown us some really important things. Number one, falling from a large distance into water causes no harm. Number two, we can swim, and we have an air meter that shows us how long we can stay underwater. Number three, falling without having water to break our fall causes damage. Number four, we can use air vents to boost our jumping height. And number five, video games are a huge promoter of violence, so you'll probably become a murderer at some point in your life. Sorry to break it to you. A little further in the cave, and we encounter our very first enemy who attempts to run away after we attack it. But, just like a defenseless stranger in a dark alley, we pursue it relentlessly until we manage to finish the job, allowing ourselves a brief moment of triumph before the shock and horror set in at the realization of what we've just done. We proceed on to the next room where we encounter even more enemies, but this time, as the victims of bad karma, we are killed without mercy. This is essentially how the game went for me. I'd explore a little bit, encounter some enemies, get killed rather quickly, then I'd respawn and reap my vengeance on those that just killed me, having learned where I went wrong. This happened quite a lot. Just like watching someone get hit by a bus, this game makes you painfully aware of your own mortality by how often it'll kill you. The game claims to be difficult, and that's not far from the truth. However, hardly did the death seem unfair, and after I had died, I learned of new ways I could prevent death the next time, and after a while, I could avoid it more easily. The game also rewards you for killing enemies by dropping things like arrows, swigs of health potion, and new equipment. The equipment you can get, such as armor and weapons, are all very different and affect your stats in many different ways, making you adjust your playstyle based on the equipment you want to use and when. Not only can some affect your stats, but some equipment you can find is necessary to progress through the game. For example, this creepy air tank that looks like a demon that you have to make out with in order to breathe underwater. The game also provides you with slots that you can use to have different equipment to quick change between based on what you may need. As much as I love the combat, longing for the sweet embrace of death, and trying out new combinations of equipment, my love for the game comes from the exploration. Exploring, to me, is what this game is all about. Every new room you enter is completely different from the rest and usually comes with new enemies to encounter. And at times when you get stuck, which you will more than once on your first time playing, you get a real sense of accomplishment when you figure out how to progress. And let's face it, you aren't going to experience that from anything else you got going on in your meaningless life. I give Venture Forth a cave torch out of five. Is it a perfect game? No, far from it, but that doesn't mean it's not enjoyable. It's still a bit rough and definitely could use some polishing, but it's still in early access, so who knows what the developers have in store. 
During the time I've had it, they've updated some of the graphics, added new features, and new enemies, so it's certainly getting attention. A few of the complaints I had were fixed before I got a chance to address them, so I really don't have much to complain about. If anything, I wasn't much for the lack of story, but after I played for a while, I realized that's not the focus to the game, and after HOURS of playing, I honestly didn't care, because I was having too much fun uncovering new things. Like I said, the game is still in early access, but it's constantly being updated, so to me, it's worth the $10 price range on Steam. If it looked interesting to you, I'd encourage you to pick it up and support the developers, because I'd really like to see this game succeed. Unlike me.